The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish? Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today's Gospel, our Lord, it talks about the cost of discipleship and how before undertaking the Christian life, uh, we should take it seriously because, as the commentary says, it is not child's play. So our Lord talks about constructing a tower and going into battle. And so what is this tower that we are constructing? Well, this is the spiritual edifice within our souls, the tower of evangelical perfection. And that begins by digging deep that foundation of humility, which is usually quite costly and painful, and comes by way of humiliations. And then, upon that foundation of humility, we then need to build up all of the virtues, especially that of patience and kindness, even towards our enemies. Are you ready to do that? And then we are to march into battle and to wage this war against the enemies of our souls, the devil, the world, and the flesh. And these are formidable enemies. So this is why the path to heaven is narrow and difficult, and few there are who find it. St. Ignatius of Loyola, in considering these things, and the example of those who had gone before him, especially the example of St. Francis of Assisi and St. Dominic. He said, what if I do what they did before me? And he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to do just that, to build that tower and to wage that war. And he did so by founding the Jesuits, for the greater glory of God. This is what St. Paul talks about in today's first reading. Do everything for the glory of God. Now, the glory of God with respect to mankind consists in the salvation of souls. And that's what the rest of today's first reading talks about. St. Paul avoids giving offense to anyone and he wants to please everyone. That is, he wants to give a good example, to build up everyone that who, he, who he meets. Why? That they may be saved. That's the point. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. And Christ came as the Savior of the world to save souls. And so... That is ultimately the whole point of St. Ignatius's vocation and that of the Jesuits and that of the church in general, right, is the salvation of souls. And so let's be generous in responding to the grace of God 
Let's do what St. Ignatius did. That is, he built up uh, upon the saints who had gone before him, right? We are now living stones in this spiritual edifice of the church, and we want to build upon what St. Ignatius did before us uh, by following their example. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.